Hello, this is Marvin Glotfelty, a licensed driller and hydrogeologist from Arizona with another of the series of industry connected videos from the National Groundwater Association. Today, I want to talk a little bit about uh, filter pack sand uh, selection and design. Um, my uh, my uh, article in the Waterwell Journal for November will be coming out uh, on this topic, and so there'll be a lot more detail in that. But uh, I wanted to kind of just give a, a, a overview of it here. Um, the uh, the thing that we in the groundwater industry have done for decades, literally, is to use a formula for designing wells. We'll we'll get a batch of our drilled cuttings. We'll run them through a sieve analysis and get the different uh, weights of different grain sizes, you know, from coarse to fine. And then we'll pick the 70% size, the one that's got 70% passing it and 30% retained. And we'll assign that to be what we rely on. This is in most cases. Um, there's a few variations and they'll be detailed in my article later on. So, so when we do that, uh, that's just a formula. We can tap that out on a calculator and come up with our answer. But what the point I want to put out there is that that's not all there is. There's so much more that is the art of what we do, the art of water wells. And so um, I want to basically sh show you some examples of sand so you can have the, the visual concept and then tell you some war stories about how just that formula is not enough. Um, so I have three examples today. They're all perfectly fine filter pack sands that would be used for different purposes. Remember that when we design a well, we want to design it site specific for the hydrogeology, the groundwater system where we're located. Are we in my backyard here in Phoenix, Arizona? Are we in Calgary, uh, Canada? Are we in Florida? You know, way different situations. Who knows, you know, wherever you are working, that needs to be accommodated. The other thing is, what's the operational need? Is it a windmill in central Kansas? Is it a mining well that's going to be deep and maybe pump hot water in northern Nevada? Those things are both very real and very different from one another. That's operational needs. So that all goes into the filter pack design. But here's one example. This is one from a local source around here. And uh, you can see that the grains are a little bit dark but they're pretty well rounded and some of them are not exactly spherical. They're a little bit elongate. And so um, who cares? Well, maybe we do care. I've had people recently uh, express concerns about that and I'll, I'll detail that for you, but I'll show you the other options here I got first. This is the one from Central Texas a lot of us use. This is uh, uh, a nice windblown sand, very well rounded, well sorted. The uh, more cream colored grains are feldspar minerals. The rest is quartz. Pretty good stuff. Costs a lot more. Is it necessary for every well? No, but it's, it's better. And then if you really want high end fancy stuff, now you go with the glass beads. There's several suppliers of this now. And the suppliers both have NSF uh, certification, which we were all kind of hoping and waiting for, but it's happened. And they're very good. They cost over three times more than the more expensive sand and so way more than the first sand I showed you. So which is the right one? There's no right one. So you pick what's right for your well in your scenario. I routinely use all three of these all the time in my designs. So some of the considerations though on a well by well basis. I had an individual uh, express concerns about um, this type of, of uh, filter pack because the claim was from one of his associates is that those flat plates would lay flat against a, uh, a piece of well screen and block off the ability to receive water. And uh, that might happen to an extent, but it's my opinion that that's going to be minimal. That same well that he expressed concern about with having uh, the, the blockage from uh, elongate grains of, of sand also had a very thick annulus. So the distance from the outside face of the screen to the borehole face was seven inches on each side. That's a lot of filter pack sand through which you must convey energy and break down that wall cake. 
And you remember in some of my previous articles, I talked about the thickness of annulus. When it's very thick and you can't break down that wall cake, that is what will impede the flow of water. The formation just does what it does. The filter pack sand will be much more permeable than the formation. And the effective permeability of the well screen is better than the filter pack sand. So where's the speed bump? Where's the bottleneck? It's the wall cake. Where we've drilled that borehole, we necessarily pulverized the material and drove it into the borehole face like a stucco on a wall. We need to now remove that after we've constructed the well. So we need to convey energy through the sand. So it's the energy conveyance that will lead us to ease of water flow through it. And we need to just have that in mind. All these sands I showed you will achieve that, but in different ways. So one thing we need to consider though with uh, sand that does have elongate grains, I, I learned this about three decades ago, one of my earlier wells. I, uh, I always put a little pile, a little handful of, of uh, filter pack on the face of the screen before it's installed while it's laying down. Take a picture of it. That's uh, just kind of a cultural thing, but also it's a good idea to make sure that not that that sand didn't fall through the screen, which you didn't intend. That screen is designed in slot size to hold up that sand, hold it out while you're while you're putting it in the hole. And if that doesn't happen, you got a problem. So we put a handful of this particular sand on the well screen and 60% of it fell through. We had intended to be less than 10%. So we rejected the sand. The driller got an additional sieve analysis done. The supplier did as well. We did as well. All three of us came back with the same answer. 10% passing, not 60% passing. How did this happen? Well, turns out when you do a sieve analysis, you have a screen with you know, grid shaped wires on a tray and it shakes and the sand falls through. Those grid shaped wires are not what we have in a well screen. We have elongate slots. If it's wire wrap, they're elongate. Here's a example of wire wrap, elongate slots. Here's a, another example of louvered screen, elongate slots. Doesn't matter whether it's uh, bridge slots would be the same, mill slots would be the same. Uh, we have, we don't have little tiny square holes, uh, not in the water well business. We, we, we have elongate slots. So those grains, they're, they're, while we're developing, they're rolling, they're being moved around and they can get themselves oriented where they come through. That's analogous to what would happen down hole. So we worked with the supplier, we were able to complete the well and it's a good well to this day, 30 years later. But lesson I learned was be mindful of that. That doesn't mean that you don't use that sand. It means that you're careful about bringing it up and up, adding enough, moving some uh, swabs or other development tools to settle it properly in place while you're installing the well so that you have a nice sand envelope around the well. So these things are these these experiences we roll into our uh, our well designs and we can use them in the future. What I do here in Arizona would not always work in these other places around the country, but you talk to your 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 cohorts, and uh, you you learn these lessons locally, and then they can be applied. The laws of nature, physics, chemistry, and so on, those don't change. That's reality. That's fact. But the way things are are can be emphasized. That's a local deal. And so uh, we, we can look at all that and and kind of make our decisions. In my upcoming article, I have a couple of other war stories, but. Uh, I'll leave those for the article because there's there's some good ones there and there's lessons learned. Um, you know, I'll tell you the lessons I learned. Um, here's the good news. I'm uh, I'm an old uh, bald headed beer, gray beard guy, but I still learn something every single day, every single day. And so uh, if there's one thing we learn from our business, it's humility. So stay humble, keep your ears open and your eyes peeled and you're going to learn stuff every day. And that's that's what I come away with. So. Uh, that's it for this presentation. I hope it was helpful to you. Have a great day.